The collecting the simulated radiological data on the Seaburn Responder mobile application special feature webinar will cover how to configure your survey fields to yield a simulated reading, how to record a simulated reading, and other key pieces of information that will help you utilize the simulation capability during your next training or exercise. So before we talk about actually setting up our simulations, we'll first talk about what the simulation capability is. So this is a training and exercise tool that lets users create radiological simulations directly from the RAD Responder website. You can use an underlying source file, so a NARAC, RASCAL, or hotspot file, or one of our preset templates, and then view those simulated readings for alpha, beta, and gamma radiation from your Seaburn Responder mobile application. In this screenshot here, you can see on the left-hand side, we have our website, and on the right-hand side, we have our mobile application. If you are curious about how to actually set up those simulations, we do have a simulation manual in previous webinars that you can access. This webinar will only be focusing on the mobile application side, and you cannot create the simulations on the mobile app. That being said, the simulation features are only available on the Seaburn Responder mobile application, not the RAD Responder mobile application. And again, this webinar will focus on how to configure existing simulations via the Seaburn Responder mobile application for data collection. In order to set up your sim files, you need to ensure that you have the new Seaburn Responder mobile application. So if you had the RAD Responder or Chem Responder apps on your phone, they have been removed from the app stores and they are no longer supported. So you can go ahead and delete those and make sure you download the new Seaburn Responder app. Not only does the new Seaburn Responder application have the simulation functionality, but you can also view user drawings and GIS files in the new app. You can utilize the chat feature. We have mobile resource sets, and you can create events from the application as well. So for those of you who do not have a new Seaburn Responder mobile application, you can go ahead and go to your Apple App Store, your Google Play Store, or your Microsoft Store, and search for CBRN Responder, one word. It is free to download, and our latest version is version 1.5. This screenshot is from my Apple App Store, and I just typed in Seaburn Responder, and you'll be able to download it for free. So once you have your Seaburn Responder mobile application, you'll want to open it up. And if you have not logged in, go ahead and sign in using your existing RAD Responder Seaburn Responder credentials. You'll select sign in, enter your username and password, and log in to be brought to the Seaburn Responder homepage. So you'll be using your simulations for trainings and exercises since it is a training and exercise tool. And so therefore, since this is not a real incident and a real incident has not occurred, you will be using Seaburn Responder to simulate those readings. So what you want to do from that homepage is choose the select event option for the event where the simulation file has been created. To select that select event button, you'll be brought to your events list. You can search for the event name at the top, or if you know if your organization created it, you can look under that from my org filter, or if you know that another organization created it, you can then look under that share with me filter. So for example here, I'm just searching for the event, and once I open it, I'm going to be brought to my event configuration screen, which is what you're seeing on the right hand side. Now, this is where you can initially download your simulations. For whatever reason, a simulation has been added to the event after you're already in it. You can always navigate back to the configuration screen and expanding the simulations option. And you'll see the title of the simulation, a description of one was provided, and the start and end date of the simulation. If you see the option to download the file, go ahead and select that. If you see the option to remove the simulation file, then you know that the simulation has already been downloaded. There can only be one active simulation at a time. Once your simulation file has been downloaded, you can choose your preferred measurement units for alpha and beta readings in the simulated measurement units section. So you can have these match your SOPs, or your preferred method. So you have CPM, CPM with surface area, DPM, and DPM with surface area as both your options for alpha and beta. I did just have a little note here. So 
If you choose to use your own organization's equipment and not our default simulation equipment, and your organization's equipment does not have the surface area entered as part of those equipment details, and let's say, for example, you select the CPM or DPM with surface area, the reading will just report in CPM or DPM because, again, we don't have that surface area to give you that reading. Once your file is downloaded and you've selected your preferred units, you can go ahead and select that check mark at the top of your event configuration screen, and your simulation is all set up. So now it, you're back on your event homepage, and it's time to actually submit those simulated readings. So from that homepage, you're going to select Submit Data, and then you're going to select the field survey data type. Right now, we only have radiological simulations available for field surveys, so you won't see any of the UI on any of the other data types. When you open up your field survey entry form, you'll see at the top you have a green bar. If it says simulation mode active, you know that your simulation has been downloaded and it's working. If you have an orange bar at the top, it will say something along the lines of, you know, simulation is available. That means it has not been downloaded and you need to go ahead and download it. The first section that you'll see for the field survey form relates to the equipment selection and details. So in order to receive a simulated reading, we need to know a bit about you know, the device that you're collecting it on to accurately reflect what a reading should look like. So if you do not have any equipment selected, you'll see a little warning option. If you press that, you'll get a description. So for here, it says you must select at least one piece of equipment Peter or probe to obtain a simulated value. So for both the meter and probe, you can choose to use our own simulated equipment, which is available by default for all events that have simulation on it. Or if you prefer to use your own organization's equipment, as long as they're set up correctly, you can go ahead and use those. So for example, you have your surface area entered, your efficiency, it's accepted radiation types, et cetera. For the sake of this webinar, we'll be focusing on just the simulation equipment. When you open up your reader, you'll see a filter at the top that says Show Simulation Equipment. You'll toggle that on and select the simulation meter. Once your meter is selected, you'll need to select a probe. So you'll tap into the probe option. And you'll want to ensure that your simulation equipment filter is still turned on. You have three different choices for the simulation equipment. You can choose an alpha probe, beta probe, or dose rate probe. And this is how you're going to determine the various radiation types that you're collecting. So if you want to collect an alpha reading, you'll choose the alpha probe. If you want to collect a beta reading, you'll choose the beta probe. If you would like to collect a gamma reading, you'll choose the dose rate probe. So let's say I selected my simulation meter, my simulation alpha probe. You'll receive a couple warning messages, especially if your radiation type is not selected to match your probe. So here, you, you'll see that there's a simulated reading unable to calculate message, and this is because the radiation type is not supported by the equipment you've selected. So in this case, the equipment supports alpha, and it's asking if we would like to change the supported type. The selected radiation unit is also not supported and may change. So I'll select yes, so that way my radiation type is changed from gamma to alpha, so that way it matches my probe. But don't be alarmed if you see these warning messages. They're here to help you out, especially if this is your first time setting up a SIM file. So now I have my correct radiation type that matches what my probe can measure. If you select an alpha or beta measurement or probe, then your window must be open. So if you've selected gamma, you can leave the window field toggled off. And you'll receive a warning message as well, or a warning icon, if you do not have the window toggled on if you're trying to collect an alpha or beta reading to remind you to do so. And a, a note here, if you are using your organization's equipment and you do not have the window supported detail configured, you won't see it on the form, but you'll still be able to receive a simulated reading. And again, that is only if you are using your own organization's equipment that does not have the window field defined in the details of that piece of equipment. So I toggled my window open and height is also required. Right now, height is taken into account for alpha and beta measurements, but not for gamma. So you'll need to select your height. We do have some 
predetermined survey height options that are pretty common. So you can see we have one centimeter, three inches, six inches, three feet, six feet, one meter. And then we do have a custom survey height that you can choose your own. We do have more information on which heights are accepted per the data types or the radiation types in the simulation manual, but as a rule of thumb, alpha measurements can be taken at height zero to four centimeters, beta measurements can be taken at heights zero to about 366 centimeters, and gamma, we do not use height currently to determine your simulated value. So as a quick little cheat sheet, for alpha, you must have your window open, and the height can be zero to four centimeters, which would, for the pre-filled options that we have, you can select the one centimeter height option to receive a value. For beta, your window has to be open, so you'll toggle that on. And any height within zero to 366 centimeters will yield a simulated value and not zero. So you can choose one centimeter, three inches, six inches, three feet, six feet, or one meter, and you will receive a value. And for gamma, the window does not have to be open. No specific parameters are needed in order to receive a value. So in this example, I have my simulated meter. I'm using the simulated dose rate probe. Window is open, but it doesn't have to be. And I chose my height as three feet. Once I don't see any more of those warning icons, if I scroll down underneath the equipment details in the reading details section, I will see my value. So I will have you note that the reading will fluctuate to simulate using real radiological detection equipment. And your reading is based on your current location, which is what your phone is reporting. If you are in an exercise or training and you want to simulate being somewhere else to receive a reading, you can change your location mode if that's something you're interested in. So if you scroll down on your entry form to location details, you'll see that by default, your location is your current location. These GPS coordinates are determined by your device. So at the bottom here, you can see that there's this gray tracking bar, and you see that there is an accuracy of 16 meters. So that means that your GPS coordinates are accurate with a possible error of up to 16 meters. If that's precise enough for you, you're fine. Um, if that's not precise enough for you, you may want to select the map or enter the address. Or if you or in an exercise and you're trying to take readings in various locations, but it's a tabletop, for example, you can select from map to simulate you being in a different location. So I want you to open up the location option, and you'll be brought to the details page. So this is a list here of you know the, the metadata for that location. So you have your lat long, your accuracy, your altitude, and you also have a little map showing you where your phone is reporting that you are. If you want to change your location mode, you'll select location mode at the top. And then you can choose either to manually enter your lat long, enter an address. If you have a sampling location or facility, you can select from that. Or you can choose to select from map, which is what we'll be showing you today. You'll select the select from map option, and you'll be brought to a map. The blue dot indicates your current location, so where your phone is reporting you're located at. You can tap your map screen to indicate your new selected location. So here I'm selecting, you know, just across the freeway where I want to receive my simulated value. I'll select the checkbox in the upper right hand corner. And then when I and brought back to my field survey entry form, I'll see my new GPS coordinates for the location that I just selected. Now you'll scroll up and you'll see what your simulated value is going to be at that simulated location. So we have various parameters set up. Your equipment is entered, your height, your window is being opened or closed in your location. Now you're going to be receiving your actual simulated value. So in this example, my simulated reading is 5.73 micro R per hour. For the value field, you're going to enter the numerical value, so 5.73. And for unit, you're going to select the unit that is displayed in the simulated reading bar. So note that your unit has to be manually selected. So right now I have CPM selected, which is obviously incorrect. So what you'll want to do 
is you enter 5.73 in the value. And then for the unit, you'll want to open up the unit field. And we do have common gamma units as a new feature available at the top, and you'll just select the micro R per hour unit. You'll want to double check, of course, that your value and units match. However, I do want you to note that your value will fluctuate. So that simulated reading value is going to fluctuate a little bit just to simulate you, you using actual radiological detection equipment. So if the initial value varies slightly from what you're seeing after you enter all your information, don't worry. So in this example, I'm now seeing 5.78 when previously I was seeing 5.73. Just pick the number that you're seeing, type it in, and again, your simulated reading is going to, to vary slightly. Once you've entered all of your equipment, your reading details, you can go ahead and save the survey by clicking the save icon at the top or there is a save button at the bottom of the form. Once you save your reading, your equipment details will carry over to the new entry form. So if you are only using one meter and probe and you're only collecting, let's say, gamma radiation, for example, you do not need to adjust these details for subsequent reading. So you don't have to re-enter your meter, your probe, your height. It will be available for you moving forward. However, if you are collecting a different radiation type, make sure that you do change your equipment, whether that be the meter or the probe and the radiation type field. Depending on if it's alpha or beta, you'll also want to make sure that your height is selected appropriately. Otherwise, you could yield a zero value. Basics of setting up your simulation on the mobile application and entering that data. But there are a few additional features that I wanted to mention. Save a simulated value, you need to know your date and time and your location. We've already covered how to change your location to yield a simulated reading, but you can also adjust your date and time to see the decay. So this can be especially useful if you're conducting a tabletop exercise, for example, with the incident spanning several weeks, but in reality, you're only at that table for a few hours. So after you have all of your equipment details set up, you can go to the bottom of your field survey form so right under where we were looking at the location, you'll see a date taken field. By default, just like with location details, we show your current location. By default, we show the current date and time. You'll tap into that date taken field to then see the option to change your date and your time. You'll select the date at the top to change the month, day, and year. And then you'll select the time at the top to change the hours, minutes, and whether it's an AM or PM time. You'll note here for this example, I took a reading at the same location on 11-16, and I received a value of 178.9 milliard per hour. Then I adjusted my time to be six days in advance, so 11-22, and I can see now that my reading is about 18.9 milliard per hour. So you can see that is a, a pretty significant difference. And again, this is just showing the decay. Just like with all other data points that you collect in your mobile application, you can always go back to see the simulated values that you collected, and you can make any edits if you need to. So if you accidentally enter the wrong height or you know, a typo, you can always go back and edit that reading. And the last feature that I'll note is that Simulated readings are treated just as real data in terms of how you can view them on the website, how you can view them on the map and the data tables. From your mobile application, if you open the event map for your event, you'll view your simulated data along with real world or you know, non-simulated data that's entered. So for example, here, this is my event map. I can see a user drawing or a GIS file. I can see some you know, gamma readings, some clusters, and you'll be able to see all of your simulated data, data in a geospatial environment. From our document library, there is a radiological simulations folder. In that folder, you'll find the simulation manual, but you'll also find our radiological sim files in the Seabrook Responder mobile application document. This was just updated last month, and you're going to get a step-by-step, screenshot-by-screenshot job aid of 
how to download the simulation file, how to manage your simulated equipment, how to enter data. If you have any questions about the simulation capability or you need a link to any of the resources, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can email us at support at seabirdandresponder.net. 